So I saw this thing the other day talking about uh, some advice that you can use if you're going to fly with your kids on a plane. It oh, was the worst I want to hear this. It was the worst, worst advice. I've How could it be worst advice? It what wasn't was it? advice. Like one of them was, no, you're not alone. That's not advice. <laughs> that is, I mean, thank you, but it wasn't it. Like okay. that doesn't help me deal with my kids. What else? Um, be flexible. Bored early so that they get even more restless. You mean the kids bored early? Yes. Like, well, we all get on the plane earlier. So first of all, you got to pay a premium. If you're going to board early, like you have to upgrade for that kind of thing. And then they're just sitting there an extra 15 minutes while everybody knocks them in the head with their so what'd you do? carry on. Here's what I did. When my boys were like six or seven, we went on a long trip and I put together a goodie bag that they knew they were getting. And I said, you'll only get it once we take off and get in the air. Well, that's good. So it had snacks in it. It had like little books where they could do crossword puzzles and things like that in it, um, coloring, and then video games. They got a new video game. They were perfect. It was a two and a half, three hour flight, literally perfect. No problems at all. That's advice. Didn't I hear that uh, with Liz? Didn't I hear that? Kids were crawling on you? Listen, was that yours? That was, uh, no, it was not my kid. It was somebody else's kid. So a friend of mine and I took a flight, a really long, like nine hour flight. And we were on the outsides of four seats. She was on one side, I was on the other. A couple got in the middle and they had a two year old. No, no big deal. I figured the kid's going to sleep all night. No, she crawled us all four the entire nine hours at first i'm sure mama liz liked it i did and then you know you're trying to not have jet lag and so you're trying to get you know some z's in there somewhere and no she crawled everybody the entire nine hours Mm -hmm. it was like oh my goodness now now what am i gonna do jet lag for sure just know you're not alone (laughs) Thanks. You're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning. His radio. Jasmine is here at 800-447-7234. What's going on, Jasmine? I just wanted to let you know what we used to play in the car when we were kids. Oh, great. So what did you guys do? We used to count cows. Oh, I remember doing that as a kid with a family that I used to travel with a lot. So so how did you play count the cows? On your side of the road, you counted the cows. When you got to a cemetery on your side of the road you had to bury all your cows and start over again really i never did it that way we just counted cows one thing that we do when we're traveling with the kids if they're not stuck with their head in the video games <laughs> they uh we do the um license plate thing yeah and we do. and we do the alphabet we do the alphabet um we... i always win you do yeah because i make up things that i see oh that's hilarious <laughs> i saw an aardvark <laughs> <laughs> aardvark hey I saw a barracuda. It's you didn't see great. it was in the ditch. <laughs> You're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning. His radio. Honestly, it doesn't smell any different. Really? No, it doesn't smell any different to me. Okay. Than than a real one of these. Well, it's still a real one. It's super it's just sweet. A, though, it's right? just a different flavor. It, it is a different. It's Rob and Liz in the morning. His radio. So. <laughs> I thought it smelled different. You I literally think. stuck this thing up my nose. You. Literally did. Because I'm trying to. I won't eat that one. I'm trying to <laughs> see if I can smell it. the cotton candy in it. Well, but oh, that just. Oh, I'm such a traditionalist. I yeah. think I, th- I like just the original. It's just, it smells like a, a normal one of these. It doesn't smell like there's any cotton candy on the inside of these. I'll tell you who's a cotton candy fan. That's Scott's kids. Oh, my goodness. My daughter and son, they love cotton candy, anything cotton candy flavored. You know what one of their favorite things is? Mm. Going to this uh, gas station was a Sheets. They have a for real milkshake machine. And you get a cup and you put it in the machine that makes the milkshake, right? They have a cotton candy milkshake. And it just turns their tongue blue, yuck. And they love it. They turn it blue, yuck, and love it. Yeah. My son likes cotton candy explosion ice cream. So so here's the thing. What we're referring to is the uh, the Oreo cookies are now cotton candy. cotton candy. Weren't these around before? I feel like I've seen them. I don't think I've ever tasted them. Why not? How you want one? I got, no, I got I, quite a few here. Look, traditionalist when it comes to Oreos, I just want the regular. I will every now and then indulge in a double stuff, but all these other coffee, red velvet, cotton candy, keep them. They were around at one time. They, I 
think yeah. so. Yeah, and they just came back in stores. I think Ninja found it at her Walmart or something like that. Girl. You did? Where was it? Uh, it was at Walmart. We had to go get dog food, and they were bringing it out right as we walked in. And I was like, Providence! Score! Shall we even try? Go ahead, y'all. Look at it. She's not going to have any. Uh, you know, I just ugh, can't. Don't eat the one near Rob's nose. For yeah, real. No, I set that aside for, for a special time. <laughs> for a special person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't for, know who, but. <laughs> somebody's going to get that, that one. What do you think, uh, Ninja? Okay. I don't like cotton candy flavored stuff, but this is good. Is it? Okay. Fair enough. It's don't good. like it, but likes it. I don't it. know why, but I like it. I don't think that uh, I haven't tried it yet, but since it doesn't smell like there's cotton candy in it, I think it's just going to taste like an Oreo cookie. Well, my thing, take off the outer uh, one of the outer cookies and just eat the cream because we'll that's Jake where do the that. taste is. How do you eat your Oreo, Jake? Yeah. I now because I got this whole new like thing I do. So I take the Oreo, I get a fork. I put the fork in the cream in the middle and then dunk it in milk and then eat it that way. <gasps> Look oh. at you. You need to just invest in sticks. Right. So you yeah. put it on like sticks. sticks. Right? Yeah. I'll try. I'll try. Okay. Okay. Try. You're doing the cream? One fill apart okay. now. I just start over for it. Okay. Tastes you know, like an Oreo to me. It doesn't taste any different? Does it taste like the golden? Because it's not a chocolate cookie no. on this one. No. Okay. Now I don't like it. So I got to tell you, Christine texted yeah. and said, Yuck. you guys are going to laugh, but she's never at 28 years old, never had cotton candy in her life. What? Bruh. Right? Really? What? Like, she said it's so bad for your teeth. That's true, but I Yo, mean, at least once, I mean, go to the fair. You're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning. His radio. I don't know about you, but I have the hardest time falling asleep. I had no idea. Takes me forever. Oh, see, I'm gone like that. But the military, if you are like having an issue, uh, like Rob is, falling asleep at night, I got some tips for you from the military. Because, you know, they're usually, a um, lot of noise probably is they're sharing bunks or, you know, these uh, sleeping quarters. Well, what's the hack? So here it is. You breathe deep, but you tense up muscle groups, different muscle groups for about 10 to 20 seconds. Then you relax that muscle group, you breathe in again, and you tense up another group of muscles. And by the time you're done with this, all your muscle groups, you should be completely relaxed and should fall asleep. Once you practice it a good bit, about 10 minutes. 10 minutes to fall asleep? Yes. Now, at first, when you first start, it's not going to be that quick. Maybe 30 minutes to an hour, honestly. Tense up muscles for an hour? Yeah, because you have to just keep practicing. So, I don't think you have to tense up your your muscles for the complete hour, but you're not going to fall asleep quite as quickly. I feel like I'd have to get a workout in. A little bit. (laughs) (laughs) But, you know, maybe try it. Just a deep breath. Tense up, you know, maybe your upper body. 10 okay. to 20 seconds, let it go. You have to hold your breath for that long, too? Yeah. You're supposed wow. to. Wow. Yeah. That's a, no wonder why. You get exhausted. Rob and Liz. His morning crew. Imagine yourself at TSA, and right before you board the plane, they ask you to step on a scale. <laughs> okay. Right? (laughs) This is happening in New Zealand at the Auckland International Airport. So if by chance, that's where summer vacation brings you, if you're boarding Air New Zealand, you're going to have to get weighed before you get on the plane so they can distribute everybody correctly. And they're not doing it just to see how much we weigh, thankfully. Uh, But they are trying to get an average weight of people that would be flying. They're passengers, and they're only going to do it for a short time, which is good. So the next, like, three weeks or so, they're going to be weighing people. The good thing is this, is that you won't see or anybody else sees the digits. That's embarrassing. I was on a ride one time where they actually did weigh people, (gasps) and you see the digits in front of you. You're like, no. No. Because you had to sit. It was some kind of water ride. I can't even remember where it was. Mm -mm, But I do remember that experience, and I'm like, no. Well, it's bad enough when you have to go through security, and then you make the little, because I make it go off. Almost every single time. Ding, ding, ding. And then you have to be pulled over. And uh, well, do you it, want to be pat down? Oh, listen, goodness. she does wear a ton of jewelry. I do. Well, not a ton. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hold up. Look at her. You should see her left arm on his radio TV. She's got like how many bracelets on? 20? Okay. There are four. 
there is a a larger bangle and then three teeny tiny little bangle See? bracelets. So there's four. That sets off the alarm before you even go to the airport. <laughs> Rob and Liz, his morning crew. I can't remember when this was, maybe 2016 or 17, something like that, when there was a movie pass that was out. You spent, I don't know, 10, 20 bucks a month, and you got unlimited movies, yeah. or a certain amount of movies, every single month with this one pass. And then all of a sudden, too many people were using it, and they shut the thing down. They did Well, they kept raising the price, and then they would say, oh, well, you can only go to the third movie at the theater on a random Tuesday between the hours of 4 and 4.30. I mean, it wasn't quite like that, but it was all of these restrictions. So I canceled mine, like, boom, I was yeah. out. So Scott Watson, of course, he uses this every single week. How does it work? Yeah, right. I, I, you know what I use? I use the TV at home with my sound bar and recliner. I uh, see. <laughs> That That's is, what I like. How many <laughs> movies do you even go to? Well, a year, I don't go to very many, although my son and I did go see the Spider-Man movie over the weekend, and that was probably the first time I'd been in a theater in four or five months. Wow. I just don't go that often. Yeah, the movie pass is not for Scott. No, it is not. Clearly but, not for Scott. I mean, you have to go a couple of times a month. Well, they have three plans now. There's 10 bucks, there's 20 bucks, and there's 40 bucks. 40 Yeah, well, that gives you 30 movies. And a then month? the 20 bucks one gives you uh, enough credits for, it looks like, three to seven movies. I am dumbfounded. And then you get one to three movies for the basic plan you of get, 10 bucks a month. You get 30 movies a month? Yeah. Who has time for that? Scott, evidently. Oh, my goodness. I can't <laughs> imagine. I could see five movies a month. And that to me, that seems like a lot. 40 movies a month. Or 30 movies a 30 month. 30 movies a month. Oh, for my. For 40 bucks a month. And that's not a bad price. I mean, $1.25 ish, and I'm not real good at math, especially quick. Hey, that's a, that's a full Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. <laughs> I guess Take it a is. look at the weekends that you'll have now. <laughs> Rob and Liz, his morning crew. This home may um, intrigue you. Maybe something to invest in. It's only sixty thousand dollars for a house. It's yeah, it's a single family home, or a, uh, yeah, yeah, that's what you call them, right? Uh -huh. Single family home. It's a single family home. Has about five bedrooms for sixty thousand dollars. Yeah, four bedroom, four baths. I mean, it's it's it, and a basketball court on the inside. I gotta go get my checkbook. And a basketball court on the inside. Wait a minute, what? Yes, I knew she didn't hear that. A basket. A basketball court on the inside. Is this like Shaq's house? No, it used to be a high school. And somebody uh, flipped it since it was a high school. It was like, I think, sold in 1968. And some family flipped it. It became this grandiose house. Okay. I mean, you still see the the school's hallways and lockers in some of them. But some of the bedrooms are just spectacular. Oh, wow. And the storage. If it still has the lockers. Think yeah. of the storage. $60,000. All the land that goes along with it, too. I can't tell you how many acres, but there's a lot that goes to it. Wait a minute. Okay, so Rob is showing me pictures, and I see a sunken, heart-shaped tub. Oh, yeah, it's beautiful. In a high school. <laughs> a, yeah, I know. But it's a high school that would turn, uh, was okay. flipped into a house. Okay. Now it's for sale, 60000 and it needs some TLC. Well, but sixty. if you're only putting, and, and I mean, keep in perspective, only 60000 but it's a house with five bedrooms. You've got some money to do some renovations. Not everything has to be done at the same time. Well, like the basketball court needs a lot of work. Right, but that can be something you put on the back burner. There's still, I mean, even the theater, you know, where you sit and they have the stage and like the an seats. And, yeah, a yeah. little auditorium. That needs some work. Again, that's something you can close the door and get to that in five years. If the you curb need appeal to. Eh, needs a little help. Okay. You got some money to work with. You're only putting mm -hmm. sixty thousand into a house. You could, you know, what you could turn this into, an Airbnb, and then you have all these. And then, oh, okay, I gotta call my husband. Listen to her. I was just thinking homeschool.